be watered by the Holy Ghost <laughs> and come to fruition one day. Oh, but we've got a job ahead of us because now he would tell Jeremiah what's happening in the nation. And I'm telling you, we are in the same days today. Spiritual Israel, I'm not talking about Israel over, I'm talking about us. Those in the church today, we have done certain things. We've got false gods up in the church. And everybody says, what are you talking about? We've got false gods up in the church. And it's called self, it's called pride, and it is called idol worship. Yes. And it's in the church and it's causing people to stumble out there. It's causing them to stay home and not hear the word of God. It's causing them to stay home and not fulfill the calling that God's got on their life because of the pride we worship in the church, the preeminence, and the self, and all this, and all this has its roots way back a long time ago. We hear Baal, Astroth, and we hear Molech, the three major gods that the false gods that they were worshiping back then when they fell from grace and started worshiping these false gods. All of them have something connected to self. Mm. Every one of them. The reason why for the God of Molech that they would cause their children to pass through the fire, that they would give their children up and have them burned, is because they believed that if they did this, that that father <coughs> of Molech would give them the preeminence. Mm -hmm. The preeminence, the, 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 the higher stature, to put them in above everybody else. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Superiority. A supremacist. People like that. And we say, well, that, what's that got to do with us? What's that got to do with us? How many people go to so many colleges and they keep on going and going and going and they strive and they have two or three jobs and they're trying and trying and trying and they want this diploma, that diploma, that PhD, this PhD. Let me go greater. And they forget about their children. <laughs> they forget about the family unit. The husband or the wife or the children. That need to be cared for. They're, not, they're too busy trying to get the preeminence. Look what I've got. I've got a plaque on the wall that says PhD from Harvard yeah. in Princeton. And we forget about our loved ones who are most important. Where's that PhD going to get you when you neglected your family and then have gone crazy and gone wild and then MTV raised? Yes. They thought we caused our children to pass in the fire of hell and not be saved because we wanted statue. We want the freedom. Maybe a bigger house. Well, then that goes into Baal worship. Baal worship, the reason why they offered a Baal sacrifices is because they believe Baal, a fertility god, would increase their prosperity. Materialism. So Baal worship is materialism. Ha! We got Baal worship in the United States worse than anywhere. Yeah. My goodness, and the pillars are erected and everything else, son, and people are worshiping the god of materialism. And it's all in the church. Don't tell me it's not. And I don't care if this sounds negative or not. Look, it's got to be rooted out. It's got to be thrown down. And you, that don't mean you're going to be able to throw that whole administration down or the organization down. But you can tell the people that are called up in it by the word of the living God, come out and be ye separate according to the scripture. Because it doesn't work. And Astroth, that other God, that other false God that they were worshiping back then. This is a God of sensuality, uh, of sexual immorality. They would have all kinds of sick uh, festivals of sex in the temple to this God. Mm -hmm. it, it was nasty, but it, but it represents people that want to do things their own way. Go. I'm going to do things my own way. Homosexuality is right. <laughs> it is good, and I'll justify myself. They're worshiping that false God. Yeah. And the people in the church now are doing it too. Yeah. You've got people meeting. The Lutheran Church, the United Methodist Church, they had to meet. Now, the United Methodists, by one vote, cast it down to allow homosexual bishops behind the pulpit to teach the people. Look, the thing about certain types of sin as far as homosexuality, you don't want that spirit behind the pulpit teaching you. They need to be delivered. They need to be saved. God can set them free through Christ Jesus and the blood of the Lamb can wash them clean and He can use them. And they got great callings, many of them. But let me tell you something. You do not take God's word and say, it's not an abomination no more. We're going to change this. What we've done is we have not allowed the word of God to be the supreme authority in our lives. And when that happens, according to Judges chapter 2, a nation falls and God's jealousy and indignation come against it. And that's exactly what's happening to this nation. And that's exactly what's happening to our church these days. As a whole. As a whole. I ain't talking about this little church. I'm talking about as a whole. Why would you even have to meet 
with all your head figures to see if we're going to vote on this thing. And the Lutherans voted it in, by the way. The Lutheran denomination. I think of the Episcopalians, if I'm not mistaken. It may not be them. I'd have to check. But there are churches, there are denominations that are voting this thing in. Now, I know there's divisions among them because all of them don't agree. Now, you can't agree. It's against the word of the living God. But that is false God worshiping the church. And so he's calling those who will stand strong for him in the truth with love, not a judgmental behavior, not a judgmental act or hypocrisy, but I'm talking about in love. Saying, look, we've got to turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me keep on going. Verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a rod and an almond tree. What in the world could that be? I see a rod. You know what that rod is? That's a chastening rod. That's a chastening rod, that almond tree. The rod of an almond tree is showing you how fast that chastening is coming because judgment starts first where? That's a little word. That's right. First Peter chapter 4, then verse 17. Judgment starts at the house of God. There is a rod of an almond tree, and it's coming fast. It's coming to this nation too. And we can see it. You need to know these things because when people start fretting, they find they say, what's going on? What's going on? You're a Christian. Do you know what's going on? You can say, I know exactly what's going on. But it's going to be okay. But you need to get under the umbrella of salvation, praise God. <laughs> you need to go get saved. You need to come to the Lord Jesus. Come to the altar. Repent and be saved. Praise God. You'll be under the umbrella of Psalm 91. A thousand at this side, ten thousand the other. But none should come to your dwelling. But that's only if you're in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you're not in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer some things. It's going to be bad. But there's going to be people asking you. And you say, well, I, I refuse not to look at that. It's not positive. So I just close my eyes. I don't want to see it. No, no. Bury my head in the sand. It's not positive. That's what people are doing these days. Hmm. It, it's, it's, it's silly, but it's true. How in the world can you bury your head in the sand when all these things are happening around you? We need to get discernment and say, God, what is this so I can talk to the people, so I can minister to others? Because there's going to be people losing their jobs. Yeah. There's going to be people losing their health. There's going to be people losing their family members. And they're going to want to know, do you have any idea? And you can take them to the Scriptures and say, this is what's happening, but God loves you. And He wants you to come on in. Praise God. I mean, that sometimes we've got to be broken, people. This country is about to be broken, and it needs to come to salvation. It's time. If you don't harden your heart against the voice of the living God in your day, don't miss your hour of visitation. Jesus told Jerusalem, you have missed it. He weeped over him and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I have longed to hold you in my arms, but you would not have it. My goodness, they missed their hour of visitation. God Almighty visited them by His Holy Spirit. He's doing that right now. Out of mercy and compassion, He's trying to visit the church and say, Repent! Out of mercy and compassion, He's trying to visit the United States and many nations all over the world and say, Repent! 